My name is Amin. I was here uh, two days ago. Your teaching really struck me. You made it easy to me uh, that I can surrender to my soul. You were right with this Ibrahimic point of view that it's still existing in my genetics. And I feel like this is still blasphemy to surrender to my soul. Can you, would you, can you explain what I'm surrendering to? You say you feel it's blasphemy to surrender to the soul. What is it that you experience as blasphemy or why is it blasphemy? Can you tell me the cultural, the religio-cultural foundation of that feeling? Do you yeah. understand it? It's still um, the Islamic point of view. And it would be blasphemy, why? Because I was taught so. What were you taught exactly? That there's one God and that you should uh, not pray to another God and to a false prophet and everything. Yes. So I've... even the Antar Guru is experienced as something dangerous, right? That's the, that's the impact of these great monotheistic religious constructs, not just Islam, but Christianity as well. And what happens is that there is a barrier of fear put between you, Amin, and your central cosmic divine impulse, not only for you as a product of Islam, but also for those who are products of other Abrahamic cultures and religions. It is something for the spiritual seeker to penetrate beyond that wall of fear that has been put in there by the religions. And the first step on that journey is to recognize the fact that there is fear. There is fear to go inward. A, a Hindu, someone born in the subcontinent with largely pagan uh, upbringing in the context of the Abrahamic religions would not have a problem with the idea of an internal divine because there is no one way only. There are different ways that you can choose. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a huge freedom in that sense. So you need to regain your freedom. It's not even necessary to give up your Islamic cultural heritage because, you know, you celebrate certain festivals and you do that with family and same with the Christians, same with, with the Jews and other religions as well. But not at the cost of self-realization. Self-realization is indispensable for joy in living. Even the most devout religious person will not experience the joy of living that comes to the spiritual seeker and finder on their journey to self-realization. So it's indispensable, it's not, it's non-negotiable, you know. So, to overcome that fear, the first step, is to acknowledge that it is there. That there is this sense of betrayal of Jesus or of God or of whatever other figure the seeker associates with. But it is not a betrayal because that projection of the, the divine outside yourself is born out of what is known within. So you as a human being, you create God. God doesn't create you. And you create God because you feel that divine cosmic something within you. But that divine, that cosmic was taken out by the religions and placed somewhere else. And as a spiritual seeker, all you're doing is to simply bring it back where it belongs. So you're not, I mean, blasphemy. Blasphemy is actually only when you criticize negatively something which is inherent to a text. In this case, we know which text we're talking about. So we're referring to a very specific text and some very specific sentences. 
And I don't think you are as small as those sentences. You have to grow beyond. It's also history. We have to see that particular text in the context of history. And so we also have to be able to leave out what doesn't make sense anymore, which the reformers at some point will undertake. Every great religion, quote unquote great, has had its reformers, and, and so will this one. But until that happens, you will reform it for yourself in silence, not to speak too loudly about it, because then you might be in trouble. So the question is, what are you being disloyal to? If that God outside is also within you, and if you can start to feel it, then what you experience is what you experience. You cannot deny an experience because a certain text denies it. When you have a kundalini disturbance like you do, then I'm afraid you're going to have to do that. And, of course, in the interest of truth, you may be required to leave everything behind. The truth is not going to just be with you the way you want it to be. It doesn't work that way. That's why the pain is the pain better now. Yeah. Have you been doing the Sashtanga Namaskar Kriya? Yes. You do understand that in your religion that that is already blasphemic to do yes. something like that. So what are you going to do about it now? <laughs> you ask one of the Malvis to Mullahs to come and do something. If they can't do it, then you say, OK, if you can't do it, then I have to do this. I mean, I don't believe in Germany you're under so much pressure. No. But if you were living in this country, you would have a bit of problem, yes. What happens to all those people who have to make that step? Because the Kundalini is going to push you into that step. So before anything is pushing you anywhere, you bend. And look at it this way as a first step. You know, because you grow up with that very intense religious training everyone does who grows up in that religion. It's not the same as Christianity of today. It's, that'll be in 500 years. Like Christianity was 500 years ago, that's what we are dealing with now. So that, that fear that is instilled in you has to be understood as an aspect of ego. Whenever that fear comes up of blasphemy, you're going to look at it and say, this is the ego, this is the socialization. I was not born with that fear. You cannot be a spiritual seeker and be fearful of religion. You don't go out and trumpet it on the streets, obviously. But you, for yourself, you live the truth, come what may. And if you decide not to go with the truth, the Shakti will start moving again and cause you trouble. And it is happening all over the world. Millions of people now, not just hundreds of thousands. It's about surrender, it's about bending, and it's not about surrender to what is external to yourself. It is about surrender to the truth of the system. Stop bending to the ego, whether it is the ego of religion or the ego of, of corporation or the ego of family or the ego of nation. The future is the truth, it's not the ego. And so the disturbed Shakti is only here to direct you in the correct direction. And as you move in the direction towards the truth, the Shakti calms down and the pain goes away. The moment you turn back to the ego, fear, for example, of, of internal blasphemy, it's not that some mullah is going to come and beat you up for, it, for this. In Germany, that's where you come from. Yes. It's not going to happen in Germany that they're going to come, at least not yet. The future will show. So at least for now, you don't have to be afraid, at least at home. The divine outside is the divine within. What is the difference? It's a drop of that big ocean. So use that strong German conceptual that you've developed to deconstruct the fear. 
Use it to deconstruct the fear. What is this fear? What is this blasphemy? Are they serious that there is like this God out there that's going to punish you if you do this or that? Are they serious that after you pass away you get uh, uh, to hell or to heaven? Are they serious? Where is this hell? Why have we not seen it anywhere? Point it out. Where is this heaven? Deconstruct the fundamental concepts to reach the truth. Since, since the conceptual is the a realm of consciousness with which you operate generally, then deconstruct it and the fear will go away. Go to the truth, bend, bend, bend. That's the master. That's the master. And as you bend deeper and deeper, the truth will support you to be more and more fearless. Ask for grace. Ask for grace, pray for grace. You know how to pray, no? you're a Muslim, so then pray for grace. What do you pray for otherwise? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you don't pray five times a day, the way I see you, so if you were to do that, what are you praying for actually? What do you pray for in your religion? What is that prayer? What do you pray for? For myself, I just pray for the world and for... I'm talking about when they do those five times a day prayers, what are they saying? They're praying to God. They're reciting. It's a recitation. Yes. It's like a prayer. Recitation of a prayer. Is yes. It? So you recite to the internal God, that's all, to start with, and I don't mean that prayer. The prayer is, let me act in the truth in every moment. Let me not give in to the ego. Let me learn to discern between the truth and the ego. In this moment, now, again now, again now, let me be in this moment a servant of the truth impulse. Let me be a servant of the truth. Let me not bend to the ego and its commands and its demands and its desires and its yearnings and its projections and its, its insistings and opinionatings, that loud noise. Let me not bend to that, let me sense the truth within. You did not have that religion when you were born. When you came out of your mother's belly, you didn't know. It was something taught to you, so you can unlearn it also. It's a very, very, very challenging legacy to deal with. But that's your challenge. Don't give in to the fear. Don't you think it's ridiculous if you use your conceptual abilities? You've been to school and you told me you completed university, so you need some minimal degree of, I mean, very minimal degree of intelligence to finish university, at least your bachelor. So use that intelligence and that ability to deconstruct everything possible on this planet to deconstruct that that has been slapped on you, that terrible fear of, I think it's one angel on the left and one angel on the right and sort of whispering or keeping an eye on you or it can't possibly be true, can it? You need to use your intelligence to deconstruct if you wish to uh, maintain a connection with the cultural aspects, that's one thing, but when it comes to the metaphysical, when it comes to the spiritual, actually, you have to leave those things behind. Time has come. And the way you do it is by bending and surrender the truth, the truth. So don't allow all that terror to terrorize you. Go inward and be in touch with the Divine within. And if you don't do that, Ma is going to Ma doesn't care what religion you are. <laughs> You'll be all right, just bend. And don't be afraid. The worst that can happen is you'll die because of it. It's better than to live in fear for an entire lifetime. Why? And you won't die, you'll be fine. You'll make it through to the truth. You will. Ask for grace, ask for grace. And whenever you can attend a satsang, you come.
You came specially for this satsang. Yes. Yes, then you have to hold on to it then, no? It's not like, ah, I came to a satsang, I listened to her twice, now it'll all be fine. It's not going to work that way. Not with a kundalini that is disturbed like that. Other people, yes, that's okay. They can come and go, but <laughs> hold on to what has brought you to your truth. Thank you. And don't be afraid. Does he look like he's not going to be afraid? <laughs> Religion is a strange thing, really very strange. There's so much based on fear. And then spirituality is approached with fear in the heart. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Nothing is going to happen, it's just going to get better. There's just a bigger smile and a little bit more joy every day. That's what's going to happen. Those of you who are born and raised here as Hindus, they go, so no, in ka kya torture hai? Anarchic, don't care about anything, not afraid of God, not, <laughs> not afraid of any of the gods, nothing full freedom to do whatever nonsense you want to do. Huh? That fear, that guilt, you all don't have any fear, you all don't have any guilt. You should have some, I feel. Thoda to hona chahiye. Aapko to hona chahiye, definitely. To phir hoga kuch thoda. Karoge kuch. Dharma kle to kuch karoge. Dar ke mare. Jiyo bas moj maja karo, ha. Aishman Baba.